Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is August 21st and right now we are looking at the mid-level water vapor loop. You can clearly see our next weather maker just now moving across Haida Gwaii. Vancouver Island is here, there's Washington, Oregon, and this is going to be with us for a few days. It's going to bring some widespread precipitation. It's going to bring the thunderstorm potential back to the Pacific Northwest, and we're going to take a look at those details here as we go through the video this morning, as well as the extended forecast. Now, taking a look here at what happened yesterday, we did have a few lightning strikes right off the coastline yesterday morning. We did not get a lightning strike across western Washington or western Oregon or western British Columbia, but we did get some across some of the Cascades. You can see them firing up right there, for example, Oregon as well. A couple of clusters of thunderstorms across eastern Oregon, up into eastern Washington. Very early this morning, thunderstorm activity across northeast Washington. And this is where we are right about now. And you can kind of see that next polar lobe dropping down. This is our big weather maker here coming up that we've been talking about for a few days now. Taking a look at today, thunderstorm potential, mainly Spokane East. There is a slight chance across some of western BC, Vancouver Island, and some of the coastal areas here. We'll take a brief look at that. This is day two, though. You can see they have introduced it here. Eugene, Portland, Seattle are included. And day three is this upper level low will be right over the top of some of western Oregon at this time. Taking a look at Seattle yesterday, 77 is the average high. 68 is what we got, so quite a ways below average. 17 hundredths of an inch of rain. We will definitely take it, and we have more coming. We are most likely going to finish this month well above average as far as precipitation is concerned. Will we drop down towards the average high for this time of year and maybe get some below normal temperatures finally in here? We definitely will the next few days, but we could be warming up as we go towards the end of the month. So taking a look here on the European, this is that polar lobe we have seen on the mid-level water vapor loop. And you can see it positioned into place off the Washington, Oregon coast as we go on in through Thursday afternoon. This would be about Friday afternoon here. You can see it's going to take its time moving across the area. Starts to pinwheel through there as we go through the day Saturday and then kicks out as we go on in through the day Sunday. Then a little bit of a ridge builds here, but then we have another trough moving through British Columbia. It's going to squash those heights, but then there's potential for more ridging as we go towards the end of the month but take that with a grain of salt right now. Still a lot of details to work out there, a lot of model uncertainty. Looking at the Northern Hemisphere, the Hawaiian Islands is right there. Greenland would be here. There's Washington State. And just kind of giving you an idea of our little bit of a taste of fall here as we go through the month of August. You can see that little polar lobe spinning across the Pacific Northwest and kicking off. And uh, you can really uh, see from this image uh, the very cold air across the Northern Hemisphere, at least relatively speaking. It becomes much colder as we go through the fall and the winter months, of course. But where this boundary meets the more subtropical and tropical air off to the south is known as the mid-latitudes, and that's where the mid-latitude cyclones develop. And as this continues to increase as we go through the fall and winter months, then we start to bring the frequency of storms back into the Pacific Northwest into the Pacific Northwest at a much greater rate. So now taking a look at the simulated infrared satellite imagery, this is a European and you can see as this system comes over the top of us, we don't get a chance to destabilize too much. So it's not going to be like the last round, but we still show some of this negative tilt come, especially as you're going through Thursday afternoon and on in through Friday and kind of see the bands coming off the cascade, trying to bring maybe some thunderstorm activity across some of the lower elevations, no promises and definitely not as robust as what we dealt with last week. Weekend. Now here we go Friday afternoon upper level low is right here you can see it still uh, bringing a lot of precipitation across the region we'll take a look at those totals here in a moment as well. But looking at the North American model, composite reflectivity, this is the next 60 hours, what the Doppler radar may look like. Something interesting here, it does show a few moderate showers moving across some of the Puget Sound here as we go through this evening and tonight. And there's the thunderstorm potential, maybe across Southwest BC, but not much to write home about. What I want to show you is this upper level low drops down the coast and you can see how things turn southerly and then eventually we get that negative tilt and you can see some of these stronger showers try to move off the Cascades towards some of the foothills and some of the lower elevations as we go on and through Thursday night and on in through Friday morning, kind of see that continuing on. You can also see, you know, pretty impressive precipitation amount showing up for some areas, especially Cascades West as we go on into Friday afternoon. And some of this would be thunderstorm potential on Friday afternoon, like Chelan, Omac, Pendleton, Eastern Oregon also, and maybe a thunderstorm here with that upper level low right across Oregon. So taking a look at total precipitation in inches, this is going to be a nice rainmaker for many areas. You can see the precipitation generally start as we go on in through the 
uh, the evening on Thursday or maybe the nighttime there, but you can really see it start to stretch and spread across in the Oregon Cascades as we go through Thursday night into Friday morning. Look at some of these totals showing up here. Quite nice for the Washington, Oregon Cascades. Look at Seattle get up towards an inch by the time you get towards Saturday afternoon. That's definitely going to put us above average. So impressive amounts across the Olympics, and Vancouver Island, Portland probably looking at an inch as well. And we scroll off as that system kicks off as we go through Sunday night here. But yeah, nice precipitation maker incoming for sure. Now, I just want to drive home a point here that things are going to be quite chilly across some of the higher terrain as well. The snow is not meant to scare anybody or anything here, but you could see a little bit of snowfall flying at some of the highest peaks. You can see Mount Rainier is right there, the Oregon Cascades, and the little blurb will show up here across some of the North Cascades of Washington right there. But this is just kind of driving home the point that things are going to be chilly out there across the region. You're not looking at getting snowed in anywhere or anything like that, but a little taste of fall incoming. Now, looking at two meter temperature anomalies, we scroll through here. This is a Thursday afternoon. You can see things really cooling down here across Oregon and California, relatively speaking. There's Friday afternoon. Look at some areas, you know, 30 degrees below normal here. Also, Washington, much of it below normal as we go through Friday. We go on in through Saturday afternoon here. You can clearly see the region dominated by this upper level low moving across the region that has a lot of cold air associated with it. So there's sat Sunday afternoon, and then we go through uh, Monday, and we start to bounce back a little bit and get back towards normal a bit, and maybe some ridging coming at the end of the month. I'll show you more on that here in a moment. Looking at apparent temperature, and again, just driving home the point, we're going to scroll ahead on in towards Thursday afternoon coming up here you can see you know maybe 71 for Seattle but by Friday look at this actually let's go to Friday Friday afternoon will be right here you can see Seattle 63 only some mid 60s for the Willamette Valley for some raw temperatures even during the daytime across some of the higher trains so heads up for that but by Saturday morning look at this you know, if you're out there camping, and a lot of groups are out camping, it is summertime here across the region, heads up for this because you're going to need to bring some warm clothing. It's going to be quite chilly as we go through Sunday morning as well. You know, this is the parent temperature. It does take wind chill into account. But again, some pretty raw conditions across the higher terrain. And now taking a look at the extended forecast a little bit here. There's yesterday's upper level low. Here's our next big weather maker here that's going to be with us for a few days as we go through this weekend. And then you can see a little bit of a ridge nosing in here. But then we got this trough that's likely to move through British Columbia. And then maybe some more ridging in moving in for the end of the month of August. But take that with a grain of salt. Big model disagreement on that still at this time frame. Looking at Seattle Tacoma, you can clearly see our upper level low dropping our temperatures down for Friday and Saturday. Then the bounce back comes here, but still some disagreement on just how much we're going to warm up as we go towards the end of the month. Drought monitor here, this is going to be nice to see because we got a lot of precipitation coming, especially for the Cascades of Washington, Oregon. Hopefully we can get some of that rainfall into some of these affected areas across eastern Washington where there's now some extreme drought being introduced. And hopefully Idaho Panhandle and western Montana can get their share as well. Six to ten day temperature outlook, and this is after the low moves through. You can see temperatures starting to show a bounce back there and some below normal precipitation totals. But, you know, we're, we're going to be above normal for the month as far as precipitation is concerned. So it's not really a big deal. But, uh, yeah, anyway, so, yeah, here it comes. I mean, you can clearly see it on the satellite imagery. Fun stuff coming up here. I mean, it's definitely going to be a below normal here for the next few days for the month of August. And that precipitation is going to be a blessing. I'm hoping for a few a few thunderstorms that try to creep off the cascades into some of the lower elevations but again just driving on the point is not going to be like what we dealt with last weekend even though we have kind of a negatively tilted trough across the area but we will be watching that we're going to break it all down again tomorrow and try to see if anything has changed we'll start to look at the her and we'll start to look at the nam again and try to see what kind of lightning threat we're going to be dealing with here across the region but otherwise i hope you guys are having a good day click like and subscribe we'll do this all again tomorrow and i will talk to you guys then